एक ट्रेडिशनल एच टी एम एल एंड एक्स एच टी एम एल मार्कअप लैंग्वेजेस आर यू बिक्विटिस इन एवरी डे कॉम्प्यूटिंग ओल दो यू मे नॉट रियलाइज इट वर्ड प्रोसेसिंग डॉक्यूमेंट्स आर फिल्ड विथ मार्कअप डायरेक्टिव इंडिकेटिंग द स्ट्रक्चर एंड ऑफन प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द डॉक्यूमेंट इन द केस ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल वर्ड प्रोसेसिंग डॉक्यूमेंट्स दीज स्ट्रक्चरल एंड प्रेजेंटेशनल मार्कअप कोड्स आर मोर ऑफन देन नॉट बिहाइंड द सीन्स हाउ एवर इन द केस ऑफ वेब डॉक्यूमेंट्स मार्कअप इन द फोर्म ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल हाइपरटिस्ट मार्कअप लैंग्वेज एच टी एम एल एंड इट्स एक्सटेंसिबल मार्कअप लैंग्वेज एक्सिमिल फोकस्ड वेरियंट एक्स एच टी एम एल इज अ लिटल मोर ऑब्वियस दीज नॉट सो बिहाइंड थिस मार्कअप लैंग्वेजेस आर यूज टू इन्फोर्म वेब ब्राउजर्स अबाउट पेज स्ट्रक्चर एंड सम माइट आर्ग्यू प्रेजेंटेशन एस विल फर्स्ट लुक एट एच टी एम एल एंड एक्स एच टी एम एल इन द केस ऑफ एच टी एम एल मार्कअप इंस्ट्रक्शन फाउंड विद इन अ वेब पेज रिले द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द डॉक्यूमेंट टू द ब्राउजर सॉफ्टवेयर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एम्फसाइज अ पोर्शन ऑफ टेस्ट यू एम क्लोज इट विद इन टैग्स एम एंड एस शोन हियर एम दिस इज इम्पोर्टेंट टेक्स्ट एम टीम चैप्टर चार पी आर टी आई C O R E M R K U P. When a web browser reads document that has HTML markup in it, it determines how to render it on screen by considering the HTML elements embedded within the document. So, an HTML document is simply a text file that contains the information you want to publish and the appropriate markup. instructions indicating how the browser should structure or present the document markup elements are made up of a start tag such as strong and typically do not always an end tag which is indicated by slash within the tag such as strong the tag pair should fully enclose any content to be affected by the element including text and other html markup note there is distinction between an element for example strong and the tags strong and strong that are used by the element however you will likely often find the word tag used in place of element in many if not most discussions about html markup this observation even includes historically relevant documents discussing html written by tim berners lee the founding father of the web fortunately despite any impression of word choice that people may exhibit when discussing markup meaning is usually well understood and this should not be a tremendous concern under traditional html not html The close tag for some elements is optional because their closure can be inferred. For example, a p tag cannot enclose under p tag, and thus the closing p tag can be inferred when markup like this is encountered. P this is a paragraph. P this is also a paragraph. such shortened notations that depend on inference may be technically correct under the specification but stylistically they are not encouraged it is always preferable to be precise so use markup like this instead p this is a paragraph p p this is also a paragraph p p h p t e r a k t r a d i t i u html n d x h t l 5 part i there are markup elements called empty elements which do not enclose any content thus need no close tags at all or in the case of x t m l use a self close identification scheme for example to insert line break 
Use single BR tag, which represents the empty BR element, because it doesn't enclose any content and thus has no corresponding close tag. BR. However, in XML markup variants, particularly XHTML, an unclosed tag is not allowed, so you need to close the tag. BRBR. Or, more commonly, use a self identification of Clover like so. BR. The start tag of an element might contain attributes that modify the meaning of the tag. For example, in HTML, the simple inclusion of the noshte attribute in an HR tag, as shown here. HR noshte indicates that there should be no shading applied to this horizontal rule. Under XHTML, such style attributes are not allowed, because all attributes must have a value, so instead you have to use syntax like this. HR noshte is equal to noshte. As the preceding example shows, attributes may require values, which are specified with an equal sign. These values should be enclosed within double or single quotes. For example, using standard HTML syntax. In src is equal to dog.gif, alt is equal to and this black Scottish terrier height is equal to ek shune shune width is equal to ek shune shune. Specifies four attributes for this in tag that are used to provide more information about the use of the included image. Under traditional HTML, in the case of simple alphanumeric attribute values, the use of quotes is optional, as shown here. P class is equal to fancy. Regardless of the flexibility provided under standard HTML, you should always aim to use quotes on all attributes. You will find that doing so makes markup more consistent, makes upgrading to stricter markup warrants far easier, and tends to help reduce errors caused by inconsistency. RQP a graphical overview of the HTML markup syntax shown so far is presented here. Hello HTML and XHTML world. Given these basics of HTML syntax, it is best now to look at an example document to see its application. Our first complete example written in strict HTML char is shown here. Doctype HTML public WC DTD HTML char dot shune ek in http colon slash slash www dot w3 dot org slash tr slash html4 slash strct dot dtd html head meta h piquiv is equal to content type content is equal to test html. Charset is equal to UTF title Hello HTML char world title. Simple Hello world in HTML char dot shune ek strict example head body h welcome to the world of HTML h hrp HTML in really in isn't so hard pp soon you will end hearts using HTML pp you can put lots of text here if you want. We could go on and on with fake text for you to read. But let's get back to the book Peabody HTML. Online A simple modification of the initial doctype line is really all that is necessary to make this an HTML example. The comment and text is changed so you can keep the example straight. 
डॉक टाइप एच टी एम एल एच टी एम एल हेड मेटा एच पिक्विव इज इक्वल टू कॉन्टेंट टाइप कंटेंट इज इक्वल टू टेक्सट एच टी एम एल चार सेट इज इक्वल टू यू टी एफ टाइटल हेलो एच टी एम एल वर्ल्ड टाइटल सिंपल हेलो वर्ल्ड इन एच टी एम एल एग्जाम्पल हेड बॉडी एच वेलकम टू द फ्यूचर वर्ल्ड ऑफ एच टी एम एल एच एच आर पी एच टी एम एल एम रेलली एम इज एम सो हार्ड पी एच क्लास इज इक्वल टू प्राइमरी एग्जाम्पल हेडिंग एच टैग नेम एट्रीब्यूट नेम एट्रीब्यूट स्टार्ट टैग अफेक्टेड कंटेंट एच टी एम एल एलिमेंट एट्रीब्यूट वैल्यू एंड टैग सी एच पी टी आर ए घटी आर डी आई टी आई ओ एच टी एम एल एन डी एक्स एच टी मेल सात पार्ट आई Be soon you will end hearts using html pp you can put lots of text here if you want we could go on and on with fake text for you to read but let's get back to the book p body html online h in the case of xhtml which is a form of html that is based upon the syntax rules of xml We really don't see many major changes yet in our example. Doc type HTML public WC DTD XHTML. A dot soon is strict in HTTP colon slash slash www dot w three dot o r g slash tr slash xhtml one slash dtd slash xhtml one dash strct dot dtd html xml ness is equal to http www point w point org a no 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 xhtml head meta hp quiz is equal to content type content is equal to text html char set is equal to utf title hello xhtml world title simple hello world in xhtml ek dot soon is strict example head body h welcome to the world of xhtml h h r p xhtml m really m isn't so hard either pp soon you will end hearts using xhtml to pp There are some differences between XHTML and HTML but with some precise markup you see such differences are easily addressed p body HTML The preceding examples use some of the most common elements used in HTML documents including the times the doc type statement which indicates the particular version of html or xhtml being used in the document the first example uses the strict char dot shune a specification the second uses a reduced form for html the meaning of which will be explained a bit later on and the final example uses the xhtml a dot shune strict specification times the html head and body tag pairs are used to specify the general structure of the document the required inclusion of the xmlness attribute in the html tag is a small difference required by xhtml times the meta tag used in the examples indicates the mime type of the document and the character set in use Notice that in the XHTML example, the element has a trailing slash to indicate that it is an empty element. Times the title and title tag pair specifies the title of the document, which generally appears in the title bar of the web browser. Times a comment is specified by. allowing page authors to provide notes for future reference art p r t i c o r e m r k u p times the h and h header tag pair indicates a headline specifying some important information times the h r tag which has a self identifying int tag h r Under XHTML, 
inserts a horizontal rule or bar across the screen. Times the P and P paragraph tag pair indicates paragraph of text. Times special character is inserted using a named entity and hearts, which in this case inserts a heart dingbat character into the text. Times the M and M tag pair surrounds a small piece of text to emphasize which browser typically renders in italics. There are numerous other markup elements that may be implored, all of which will be explored throughout the book. But for now this sampling is enough to get our first example rendered in a browser. Note examples in the book will generally be presented in HTML. Syntax specific to particular browsers, older HTML variants or XHTML will always be noted when used. Viewing markup locally. Using a simple text editor, type in either one of the previous examples and save it with a file name such as helloworld.html or helloworld.htm. You can choose which file extension to use, .htm or .html. But whichever you pick for development, aim to be consistent. This book uses .html. HTML for all of the files. After you save the example file on your local file system, open it in your web browser by opening the file menu and choosing open, open page, or open file, depending on your browser. See H-P-T-R-A-K-T-R-A-D-I-T-I-O in Apple HTML and DITIO, Apple HTML and DX HTML no. Part I. Once your browser reads the file, it should render a page like the one shown here. If for some reason you didn't save your file with the appropriate extension, the browser shouldn't attempt to interpret the HTML markup. For example, notice here what happens when you try to open the content with .txt extension. If you want to make a change to, to the document, you could update the markup, save the file, go back to the browser, and click the reload or refresh button. Sometimes the browser will still reload the page from its cache. If a page does not update correctly on reload, hold down the shift key while clicking the reload button and the browser should refresh the page. As you write markup, keeping the browser and editor open simultaneously is a very good idea to avoid constantly reopening one or the other. Many web editors will assist you in loading your web pages into various browsers or even preview the visualization of the markup directly. Figure 8 say 8 shows this process in Adobe's popular Dreamweaver program, www.dreamweaver.com. Thus P-R-T-I-C-O-R-E-M-R-K-U-P once you get the hang of markup production, you'll, you'll see that, at this raw level, it is much like the edit, compile, and run cycle so familiar to programmers. However, this manual process certainly isn't the way that you want to develop web pages, because it can be tedious, error prone, and inefficient when thinking of page structure and view design. For our current illustrative purposes to learn the language however, it works fine. Viewing markup with a web server. Ideally, you should aim to test your web pages as delivered off web server instead of just reading them off a local file system. 
Not only is this more representative of how your users will actually experience the page, but it prepares you for later construction of web pages that contain server-side programming technologies. There are many options for employing a web server. You may decide to run your own local development web server on your desktop system or use some hosted server instead. In either case, you need to get the file somewhere under the web server's document root folder so that they can be served out. Very often this directory has a common name like initpub, docs, site, or www, but it really could be just about anything. So make sure you check the server you end up using. Figure 1 से एक improved markup editing in Dreamweaver. C H P T E R A K T R A D I T I O H T M L N D X H T M L 11. Part I. To make your files available via the server. You might use process of uploading a file from your system to a remote server via NFTP file transfer protocol program as shown here. Many web editors also allow, allow you to synchronize files between a local directory and your remote server. For example, a snippet of the synchronization facility provided in Dreamweaver is shown here. Bara P R T I C O R E M R K U P. On the web server, you most likely will use the .html or .htm file extension for your files. When HTML files are placed in the appropriate directory. The user would issue a URL in their browser like http colon slash slash your satme slash satepath slash hellodblueurld.html and that will then return the file in question. However, note that when a marked up document is delivered over the network, it is not the file extension that indicates to the browser that the content is HTML, but rather the content type header found in the network stream. Chpterditio.htmlndxhtmltera Part I The browser then takes the header and maps it to the action of parsing the document as HTML. In some older browsers, the mapping between MIME type or file extension and browser action is obvious. This preferences dial dialog box shows that the extension or header is what triggers the action by the browser. The goal here is simply to illustrate that there is something different going on between ready locally and remotely. Before wrapping up this brief introductory example, it should be noted that in some cases when you have configured the wrong file extension or MIME type, some browsers may sniff out the content type and parse any HTML found within. For example, in figure 8 say though you can see that many variants of Internet Explorer render a file with .txt extension as HTML while Firefox does not. We have to pay attention to details even in the simplest examples if we want to avoid headaches from questionable browser practices and plain old bugs. HTML will aim to remove such problems in the distant future. But for now let's get down to the most important details, starting first by enumerating all of the variants of HTML that we might need to know about. Though Internet REMRKUP 
HTML and XHTML were in history. Since its initial introduction in late 1991, HTML and later its XML-based cousin, XHTML, has undergone many changes. Interestingly, the first versions of HTML used to build the earliest web pages lacked a rigorous definition. Fortunately, by 1993 the Internet Engineering Task Force, it began to standardize the language and later, in 1995, released the first real HTML standard in the form of HTML 2.shune. You will likely encounter more than just the latest style of markup for many years to come. So table 1 se 1 presents brief summary of the varan history of HTML and XHTML. Figure 1 se 2 irregularities with browsers handling MIME types and file extensions. Internet Explorer reads the TXT file interprets the code in the page and renders as if it were an HTML file. Firefox recognizes the file type and renders the text rather than interpret the code as HTML. Part I HTML or XHTML Varan Description HTML 2.shune classic HTML dialect supported by browsers such as Mosaic. This form of HTML supports core HTML elements and features such as tables and forms, but does not consider any of the browser innovations of advanced features such as style sheets, scripting, or frames. HTML theme dot shune the proposed replacement for HTML do dot shune that was never widely adopted, most likely due to the heavy use of browser specific markup. HTML theme dashamlav do and HTML finalized by the WC in early Unis saw that standardized most of the HTML features introduced in browsers such as Netscape theme. This version of HTML supports many presentation-focused elements such as font, as well as early support for some scripting features. HTML char.shune transitional The char.shune transitional form finalized by the WC in December of 1997 preserves most of the presentational elements of HTML theme Dashamlav Do. It provides basis of transition to cascading style sheets, CSS, as well as base set of elements and attributes for multiple language support, accessibility, and scripting. HTML char dot shune strict the strict varan of HTML char dot shune removes most of the presentation elements from the HTML specification, such as font, in favor of using CSS for page formatting. Char dot shune frameset. The frameset specification provides rigorous syntax for framed documents that was lacking in previous versions of HTML. HTML char dot shune a transitional strict frameset, a minor update to the char dot shune standard that corrects some of the errors in the original specification. HTML addressing the lack of acceptance of the XML reformulation of HTML by the mass of web page authors, the emerging HTML standard originally started by the voted Bluejee Bluege group and later rolled into WC effort aimed to rekindle the acceptance of traditional HTML and extend it to address web application development, multimedia, and the ambiguities found in browser parsers. Since 2005, features now part of this HTML 
स्पेसिफिकेशन है बिगिन टू अपियर इन वेब ब्राउजर्स मडीन द फ्यूचर ऑफ एक्स इन वेब ब्राउजर्स एक्स एच टी एम एल एक डॉट शून्य ट्रांजिशनल रिफोर्म्यूलेशन ऑफ एच टी एम एल एस एन एक्स एम एल एप्लीकेशन द ट्रांजिशनल फोन प्रिजर्व मिनी ऑफ द बेसिक प्रेजेंटेशन फीचर्स ऑफ एच टी एम एल चार डॉट शून्य ट्रांजिशनल बट एप्लाइज द स्ट्रिक्ट सिंटैक रूल्स ऑफ एक्स एम एल टू एच टी एम एल एक्स एच टी एम एल एक डॉट शून्य स्ट्रिक्ट रिफोर्म्यूलेशन of html char dot shun is strict using xml this language is rule enforcing and leaves all presentation duties to technologies like css xhtml 1.1 restructuring of xhtml 1 dot shun that modularizes the language for easy extension and reduction it is not commonly used at the time of this writing and offers minor gains over strict xhtml 1.0 sola p r t i c o r e m r q u p beyond the standard forms of markup described in table 1 se 1 there are of course various non standard forms in play for example the browser vendors introduced various extensions to html and interestingly continue to do so we also have to contend with the ad hoc use of markup that doesn't really conform fully to any particular standard other than to what usually renders in common web browsers such a tag soup is certainly not the best way to approach building web pages regardless of whether browsers accept it standards for all forms of markup exist and should be adhered to whenever possible html and xhtml dtds the specifications up close contrary to the markup some web developers seem to produce both html and xhtml have very well defined syntax all HTML documents should follow a formal structure defined by the World Wide Web Consortium (WC) www.w3.org, which is the primary organization that defines web standards. Traditionally, the WC defined HTML as an application of the standard generalized markup language (HTML). HTML is a technology used to define markup languages by specifying the allowed document structure in the form of document type definition DTD. A DTD indicates the syntax that can be used for the various elements of language such as HTML. A snippet of the HTML char dot shune a DTD defining the p element. which indicates a paragraph is shown here is equal to 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 is is equal to percent in line asterisk paragraph at least p percent utters percent coriators percent in percent events The first line is a comment indicating what is below it. The second line defines the p element indicating that it has a start tag e as shown by the dash and an optional close tag e as indicated by the o the type of content that is allowed to be placed within a p element is defined by the entity percent in line which x here as a shorthand for various other elements and content this idea of only allowing some types of elements within other html or xhtml varn description xhtml 2.0 a new implementation of xhtml that will not provide backward compatibility with xhtml 1.0 and traditional html 
XHTML though will remove all presentational tags and will introduce variety of new tags and ideas to the language. XHTML basic 1.0 variation of XHTML based upon the modularization of XHTML 1.0 designed to work with less powerful web clients such as mobile phones. Elements is called the content model. If you further explore the specification to see what that percent inline entity maps out to, you will see that it contains numerous other elements such as in, strong, and so on, as well as regular typed text. The final line defines the attributes for AP tag as indicated by the entity percent actors which then expands to a number of entities like percent core, percent in and percent core events which finally expand into variety of attributes like ID, class, style, title, length, DIR, on click, on click and many more. The full syntax of the P element can be found in the reference in chapter 10. The aim here is for you to understand the syntax of SGML in a basic sense to support your understanding of how web browsers treat markup. As under example, look at the HTML char dot shune a DTDS definition of the HR element A. Is equal to is equal to is HR o umpti horizontal rule. At least HR percent utters, percent coreators, percent in, percent events. From this syntax fragment, note that the HR element has a start tag but does not require a close tag. More interestingly, the element does not enclose any content as indicated by the Mukti designation. It turns out to have the same set of attributes as the P element, as defined by the percent utters entity. As mentioned in the previous section on the history of HTML, in Uniso Ninyanwe the WC rewrote HTML as an application of XML and called it XHTML. XML, in this situation, serves the same purpose as this GML. A language in which to write the rules of a language. In fact, XML is in some sense just a lit form of SGML. XML and SGML can be used to write arbitrary markup languages, not just HTML and XHTML. These would be called applications or, maybe more appropriately, application languages. Numerous markup languages have been defined with SGML and XML, and you could even define your own if you like. The relationship between the various markup technologies is shown here. Languages defined by Example Application Languages SGML XML Take HTML Docbook WML XHTML RSS SOAP The DTD defined in XML for the XHTML language is actually quite similar to the DTD for traditional HTML. For example, Consider the XHTML DTD entries for the two elements previously presented. Is equal to is equal to is equal to o r e m r k u p. Is equal to 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 equal to is equal to is equal to is. As you can see, there is some case changing. Lowercase elements, a lack of optional close tags, and a general cleanup of syntax, but otherwise things are pretty much the same. Properly constructed, HTML documents should reference 
डी टी डी ऑफ सम सोर्ट एंड इट इज इम्पोर्टेंट टू नो वॉट दिस मीन्स एस ब्राउजर्स एंड वेब क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस टूल्स एक्चुअली कॉन्सल्ट द डॉक्टाइप डायरेक्टिव होपफुली दिस ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन हैज गिवन यू असेंस ऑफ द अंडरलाइंग स्पेसिफिकेशन ऑफ एच टी एम एल एंड इट्स डिग्री ऑफ डिटेल अपेंडिक्स सी प्रेजेंट कंप्लीट कवरेज ऑफ हाउ टू रीड द एच टी एम एल डी टी डी एस नोट इंटरेस्टिंगली एच टी एम एल डज नॉट यूज एस जी एम एल और सिमिल डेफिनेशन बट इंस्टेड रिलायस ऑन एन इंग्लिश प्रोज स्पेसिफिकेशन कंबाइंड विथ सम फॉर्मलिज्म Chapter 3 discusses this change and some other aspects of the HTML language and specification that is different from the older markup languages. Document type statements and language variants. HTML documents should begin with doc type declaration. This statement identifies the type of markup that is supposedly used in a document. public wc dtd html indicates that we are using the transitional variation of html 4.01 that starts with a root element html in other words and tag will serve as the ultimate parent of all the content and elements within this document a declaration might get a bit more specific and specify the ori uniform resource identifier of the dtd being used as shown here in the case of an xhtml document the situation really isn't much different however do note that the root html element here is lower case which hints at the case sensitivity found in xhtml There are numerous doc type declarations that are found in HTML and XHTML documents as shown in table 1 to 2. Note on occasion you might see other HTML document type indicators notably one for the 3.0 standard that was never really adopted in the web community. CHAPTER 1 T R A D I T I O N A L H T M L A N D X H T M L 19 Part I While there are many different versions of X HTML the good news is that the rough document structure defined for each is pretty similar of course the bad news is that little details will be different from version to version so you need to be precise with your syntax HTML or XHTML version doc type declaration HTML 2.0 HTML 3.2 HTML 4.0 transitional HTML 4.0 frame set HTML 4.0 strict HTML 4.01 transitional HTML 4.01 frame set HTML 4.01 strict HTML 5 XHTML 1.0 transitional http www.w3.organization.trxhtml1dtdxhtml1transitional.dtd xhtml1.0 strict xhtml1.0 frame set xhtml1.1 xhtml2.0 xhtml basic 1.0 xhtml basic 1.1 Table 1 to 2 common HTML doc type declarations 20 PARTI CORMARKUP X HTML document structure The DTDs define the allowed syntax for documents written in that version of X HTML The core structure of these documents is fairly similar given the HTML 4.01 DTD A basic document template can be derived from the specification as shown here. In this graphical representation, the indicator which as previously mentioned shows the particular version of HTML being used, in this case 4.01 transitional. Within a root HTML element, 
द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अ डॉक्यूमेंट रिवील्स टू एलिमेंट्स द हेड एंड द बॉडी द हेड एलिमेंट कंटेन्स इंफॉर्मेशन एंड टैग्स डिस्क्राइबिंग द डॉक्यूमेंट सच एज इट्स टाइटल वाइल द बॉडी एलिमेंट हाउस इज द डॉक्यूमेंट इट सेल्फ विथ एसोसिएटेड मार्कअप रिक्वायर्ड टू स्पेसिफाई इट्स स्ट्रक्चर एच डी एम एल फाइव फॉलोज द सेम कोर स्ट्रक्चर बट इंट्रोड्यूस डिफरेंसेज विच इज कवर्ड इन डेप्थ इन चैप्टर टू पेज टाइटल डॉक टाइप स्टेटमेंट इंडिकेट्स टाइप ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट हेड कंटेन्स इन फो अबाउट पेज रूट एच डी एम एल एलिमेंट एनक्लोसिस एंटायर डॉक बॉडी फाइल नेम टेम्पलेट डॉट एच डी एम एल सी एच ए पी टी ई आर वन टी आर ए डी आई टी आई ओ एन ए एल एच टी एम एल ए एन डी एक्स एच टी एम एल ट्वेंटी वन पार्ट आई द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एन एक्स एच डी एम एल डॉक्यूमेंट इज प्रिटी मच द सेम विथ दी एक्सेप्शन ऑफ अ डिफरेंट इंडिकेटर एंड एन एक्स एम एल एन एस एक्स एम एल नेम स्पेस एट्रीब्यूट एडेड टू दी एच डी एम एल टैग सो दैट इट इज पॉसिबल टू इंटरमिक्स एक्स एम एल मोर इजिली इन टू दी एक्स एच डी एम एल डॉक्यूमेंट ऑल्टरनेटिवली इन ईदर एच डी एम एल और एक्स एच डी एम एल बट नॉट इन एच डी एम एल फाइव वी कैन रिप्लेस द टैग विथ अ टैग विच इनक्लोसिस पोटेंशियली न्यूमरस टैग्स कोरस्पॉन्डिंग टू इंडिविजुअल पोर्शन ऑफ द ब्राउजर विंडो टर्म्ड फ्रेम्स Each frame in turn would reference another HTML x HTML document containing either a standard document complete with and tags or perhaps yet another framed document the tag also should include a no frames element that provides a version of the page for browsers that do not support frames within this element page title doc type statement indicates type of document head contains info about page root html element encloses entire doc body file name file name template.html 22 party c o r e m a r k u p a tag should be found for browsers that do not support frames a visual representation of this idea is shown here html5 does not support standard frames though it does preserve inline frames chapter 2 addresses that html5 specific change for now we'll concentrate on a typical document structure and drill into each element until we reach the very characters displayed roughly speaking The structure of a non-framed X HTML document breaks out like so. Some statement HTML head body page title doc type statement indicates type of document head contains info about page root HTML element encloses entire doc body file name template.html frame set c h a p t e r 1 t r a d i t i o n a l h t m l a n d x h t m l 23 part i the following sections drill into each of the document structuring markup elements and explore what's contained inside the document head The information in the head element of an X HTML document is very important because it is used to describe or augment the content of the document. The element acts like the front matter or cover page of a document. In many cases, the information contained within the head element is information about the page that is useful for visual styling, defining interactivity. setting the page title and providing other useful information that describes or controls the document the title element a single title element is required in the head element and is used to set the text that most browsers display in their title bar 
The value within a title is also used in a browser's history system, recorded when the page is bookmarked, and consulted by search engine robots to help determine page meaning. In short, it is pretty important to have a syntactically correct, descriptive, and appropriate page title. Thus, given. Simple HTML title example. You will see something like this. When a title is not specified, specified, most browsers display the URL path or file name instead. Only one title element should appear in every document, and most user agents will ignore subsequent tag instances. You should be quite careful about making sure a title element is well formed because omitting the close tag can cause many browsers to not load the document. A recent version of Opera reveals what is likely happening in this situation. Here it appears that the markup and rest of the document are used as the contents of the unclosed title element, and thus nothing is rendered in the browser. It should be noted that this particular rendering may vary because some browsers fix an unclosed title. 24PARTI C-O-R-E-M-A-R-K-U-P A document title may contain standard text, but markup isn't interpreted in a tag, as shown here. However, character entities such as and copy, or, alternatively, and hush 169, which specifies a copyright symbol, are allowed in a title. Simple HTML title example, and copy, 2010 Web Monopoly, Inc. For an entity to be displayed properly, you need to make sure the appropriate character set is defined and that the browser supports such characters, otherwise, you may see boxes or other odd symbols in your title. To set the appropriate character set, you should include a tag before the page title even though traditionally title is considered the first element. Note beyond character set concerns, think twice before using a special character such as a colon happy smiley, slash, or backslash, backslash, in a document title. An operating system might have a problem with such a title if the document is saved to the local system. For example, the colon isn't allowed within Missintosh file names, and slashes generally aren't allowed within file names, because they indicate directories. Most modern browsers remove such special characters and reduce them to spaces during the save process. To be on the safe side, Use dashes to delimit items in a page title. Specifying content type, character set, and more a tag has a number of uses. For example, it can be used to specify values that are equivalent to HTTP response headers. For example, if you want to make sure that your MIME type and character set for an English-based HTML document is set, you could use because meta is an empty element, you would use the trailing slash syntax shown here. CHAPTER1 TRADITIONALHTMLANDXHTML25 Part I Most people would agree that using the UTF-8 character set is probably a good idea for Western language page authors because it gives them access to international character glyphs when needed without causing them any trouble. Deciding which MIME type to use isn't as straightforward. For standard HTML, the MIME type is always text HTML. However, when XHTML is in play, confusion and browser problems ensue. Numerous pundits bemoan the fact that most XHTML is served as text HTML, particularly because it doesn't give you the strict parsing that XML tends to afford. In the use of XHTML, you may choose from text HTML, text XML, application XML, 
An application XHTML plus XML as potential MIME types. Given the potential for compatibility and even rendering problems, for better or worse, the MIME type text HTML will be used for nearly all X HTML examples in this book so that browser rendering is ensured. This hedge will be explored a bit more later in the chapter when addressing the implications of XHTML. In summary at the point of writing this edition, it is recommend specifying a content type of text HTML and the UTF-8 character set, and doing so as your first element within the head, like so. Page title here. Note the meta element also has many other uses beyond defining character set and mime type. It is also used to set arbitrary name content pairs to provide meta information about a document for purposes like search engine optimization, for example. Other uses of tags will be covered in the reference section of chapter 3. Other elements in the head in addition to the title and meta elements, under the HTML 4.01 and XHTML 1.0 strict DTDs, the elements allowed within the head element include base, link, object, script, and style. Comments are also allowed. A brief discussion of the other head elements and comments follows. Complete information is available in the element reference found in Chapter 3. A tag specifies an absolute URL address that is used to provide server and directory information for partially specified URL addresses, called relative links, used within the document. Because of its global nature, a tag is often found right after a tag as it may affect subsequent and tag referenced URIs. 26 P A R T I C O R E M A R K U P. A tag specifies a special relationship between the current document and another document. Most commonly, it is used to specify a style sheet used by the document, as discussed in Chapter 4. However, the tag has a number of other interesting possible uses such as to set up navigation relationships and to hint to browsers about pre-cacheable content. See the element reference in Chapter 3 for more information on this. And tag allows programs and other binary objects to be directly embedded in a web page. Here, for example, a non-visible flash object is being referenced for some use. Using an tag involves more than a bit of complexity, and there are numerous choices of technology, including Java applets, plugins, and ActiveX controls. A tag allows scripting language code to be either directly embedded within alert, hi from JavaScript, asterisk more code below asterisk, or, more appropriately, linked to from a web page. Nearly always, JavaScript is the language in use, though other languages such as VBScript are possible. A tag is used to enclose document-wide style specifications, typically in cascading style sheet, CSS, format, relating to fonts, colors, positioning, and other aspects of content presentation. H1, font size, XX large, color, red, font style, italic, asterisk all H1 elements render as big, red and italic asterisk. The use of this tag will be discussed in chapter 4. Comments finally, comments are often found in the head of a document. Following SGML syntax, a comment starts with and may encompass many lines. CHAPTER1 TRADITIONALHTMLANDXHTML27 Part I Book HTML The Complete Reference Edition 5 
comments can contain just about anything except other comments and are particularly sensitive to symbols. Thus, note correct usage of comments goes well beyond syntax because they may inherently expose security concerns on public facing sites. You'll also find that comments are used not only for development notes but also to mask some types of content from browsers. The complete syntax of the markup allowed in the head element under strict x HTML is shown here. Following is an example. Example x HTML document with a head element that contains common usage of elements, sample head element. Head title base link style script ob object meta mandatory single occurrence and generally early 28 p a r t i c o r e m a r k u p dash some body content here the various details of the tags within the document head are all presented in the element reference in chapter 3 the aim here was to show you the organization of the head element and how it supports the body. Now let's move on to see the content in the document body itself. The document body. After the head section, the body of a document is delimited by and under the HTML 4.01 specification and many browsers, the body element is optional but you should always include it, particularly because it is required in stricter markup variants. Only one body element can appear per document. Within the body of a web document is a variety of types of elements. For example, block level elements define structural content blocks such as paragraphs, p, or headings, h186. Block level elements generally introduce line breaks visually. Special forms of blocks, such as unordered lists, pull, can be used to create lists of information. Within non-empty blocks, inline elements are found. There are numerous inline elements, such as bold, b, italic, i, strong, strong, emphasis, im, and numerous others. These types of elements do not introduce any returns. CHAPTER1 TRADITIONALHTMLANDXHTML29 Part I Other miscellaneous types of elements, including those that reference other objects such as images, in, or interactive elements, object, are also generally found within blocks, though in some versions of HTML they can stand on their own. Within block and inline elements, you will find textual content, unless the element is empty. Typed text may include special characters that are difficult to insert from the keyboard or require special encoding. To use such characters in an HTML document, they must be escaped by using a special code. All character codes take the form and code, where code is a word or numeric code indicating the actual character that you want to put on screen. For example, when adding a less than symbol. Comment. Inline elements. Character entity. Block elements. 30 p a r t i c o r e m a r k u p the full syntax of the elements allowed in the body element is a bit more involved than the full syntax of the head. This diagram shows what is directly included in the body. Body PH1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, D, full, all. DT, DD, pre. Block quote address field asset table. INS. DL. HR. No script script. Dil. Lee. C H A P T E R 1. 1. T R A D I T I O N A L H T M L A N D X H T M L 31. Part I. 
going deeper into the full syntax in a single diagram is unreasonable to present. Just as an example, take the P element and continue to expand, keeping in mind that these elements will also loop back on each other and expand out as well. While it might be difficult to meaningfully present the entire syntax of HTML graphically in a diagram, the diagram presented here should drive home the point that HTML is quite structured and the details of how elements may be used are quite clear. Now that you have some insight into the syntax of markup, the next section discusses how browsers deal with it. Browsers and X HTML when a browser reads a marked up document, such as the Hello World example repeated here, Hello HTML World Welcome to the World of HTML. B. Type text a B. BR span badu map object in TTIB. Big small em strong df encode q sump kbd var site. Ab acronym sub sub input asterisk select asterisk text area asterisk label asterisk button asterisk asterisk when the element is ultimately a descendant of a form element 32 p a r t i c o r e m a r k u p html really isn't so hard soon you will end hearts using html you can put lots of text here if you want. We could go on and on with fake text for you to read, but let's get back to the book. It builds a parse tree to interpret the structure of the document, possibly like this, doc type HTML head meta title. Body H1 HRP HTML EM P P HTML element text node. Welcome to the world of HTML. Really, isn't so hard. Soon you will end hearts using HTML. You could put lots of text here if you want. We could go on and on with fake text for you to read, but let's get back to the book. Hello HTML world. World. Legend. C H A P T E R 1 T R A D I T I O N A L H T M L A N D X H T M L 33 Part I These parse trees, often called thumb, document object model, trees, are the browser's interpretation of the markup provided and are integral to determining how to render the page visually using both default, X, HTML style and any CSS attached. JavaScript will also use this parse tree when scripts attempt to manipulate the document. The parse tree serves as the skeleton of the page, so making sure that it is correct is quite important, but sadly we'll see very often it isn't. Note the syntax trees presented earlier look very similar to the parse trees, and they should because any particular parse tree should be derivable from the particular markup language's content model. Browsers are actually quite permissive in what they will render. For example, consider the following markup. Hello HTML world welcome to the world of HTML HTML really isn't so hard. Soon you will end hearts using HTML. You can put lots of text here if you want. We could go on and on with fake text for you to read, but let's get back to the book. This example misses important tags, doesn't specify encoding types, has a malformed comment, uses inconsistent casing, doesn't close tags, and even uses some unknown element foo. However, this will render exactly the same visually as the correct markup previously presented, as shown in figure 1 to 3. 34 P A R T I C O R E M A R K U P. Figure 1 to 3 malformed markup works. Well formed. Markup. Malformed. Markup.
C H A P T E R 1 T R A D I T I O N A L H T M L A N D X H T M L 35 Part I Now if you look at the parse tree formed by the browser you will note that many of the mistakes appear to be magically fixed by the browser Of course the number of assumptions Assumptions that a browser may make to fix arbitrary syntactical mistakes is likely quite large and different browsers may assume different fixes. For example, given this small fragment of markup, making malformed HTML really isn't so hard. Leading browsers will form their parse trees a bit differently, as shown in figure 1 to 4. 36 PARTI I C O R E M A R K U P Figure 1 to 4 same markup different parse as shown in Firefox 3 above and Internet Explorer 8 below C H A P T E R 1 T R A D I T I O N A L H T M L A N D X H T M L 37 Part I Simply put it is quite important to aim for correct markup as a solid foundation for a web page and to not assume the markup is correct just because it appears to render correctly in your favorite browser. Validation As shown earlier, ADTD defines the actual elements, attributes, and element relationships that are valid in documents. Now you can take a document written in X HTML and then check whether it conforms to the rules specified by the DTD used. This process of checking whether a document conforms to the rules of the DTD is called validation. The declaration allows validation software to identify the HTML DTD being followed in a document and verify that the document is syntactically correct. In other words, that all tags used are part of a particular specification and are being used correctly. An easy way to validate a document is simply to use an online service such as the W3C Markup Validation Service at http colon slash slash validator.w3.org. If the malformed example from the previous section is passed to this service, it clearly shows that the page has errors. 38 P A R T I C O R E M A R K U P Pass the URL to the service yourself by using this link in the address bar. http colon slash slash validator dot w three dot org slash check question mark URI equal sign http percent sign three a percent sign two f percent sign two f ref dot com percent sign two f one percent sign two f malform delo world dot html by reading the validator's messages about the errors it detected you can find and correct the various mistakes. After all mistakes are corrected, the document should validate cleanly. Web developers should aim to start with with a baseline of valid markup before trying to address various browser quirks and bugs. Given that so many web pages on the web are poorly coded, some developers opt to add a quality badge to a page to show or even prove standards conformance. CHAPTER1 TRADITIONALHTMLANDXHTML39 Part I Whether users care about such such things is debatable, but the aim for correctness is appropriate. Contrast this to the typical effort of testing a page by viewing it in various browsers to see what happens. The thought is, if it looks right, then it is right. However, this does not acknowledge that the set of supported or renderable pages a browser may handle is a super set of those which are actually conforming to a particular specification.
It is an unfortunate reality that browsers support a multitude of incorrect things and that developers often use a popular browser as an acceptance engine based upon some page rendering for better or worse. Such an approach to markup testing might seem reasonable in the short term, but it will ultimately lead to significant developer frustration, particularly as other technologies are added such as CSS and JavaScript, and newer browsers are introduced. Unfortunately, given the browser's current method of allowing garbage yet preferring standards, there is little reason for some developers to care until such a price is realized. The Dock Type Switch and Browser Rendering Modes Modern web browsers generally have two rendering modes, Quirks mode and standards compliance mode. As their names suggest, Quirks mode is more permissive and standards compliance mode is stricter. The browser typically chooses in which mode to parse a document by inspecting the statement, if there is one. This process typically is Conforming markup Supported malformed markup Unsupported markup 40 P A R T I C O R E M A R K U P dubbed the doc type switch. When a browser sees a known standards focused doc type indicator, it switches into a standards compliant parse. Strict DTD present, however, if the statement is missing, references a very old version like 3.2, or is unknown, the browser will enter into quirks mode. Browsers may provide an indication of the rendering mode via an entry in page info. DTD missing. CHAPTER1 TRADITIONALHTMLANDXHTML41 Part I. In other cases, you may need to use a tool to determine the parse mode. Web developers should aim for a solid markup foundation that is parsed in a predictable manner. The number of rendering oddities that will still be encountered even with such a solid footing is not inconsequential, so it's best not to tempt fate and instead to try to follow the rules of markup. The rules of X HTML X HTML does have rules. Of course, though in some versions the rules are somewhat loose. Similarly, as previously discussed, these rules really don't seem like rules because most browsers pretty much let just about anything render. However, quite certainly, you should follow these rules because malformed documents may have significant downsides often exposed only after other technologies like CSS or JavaScript are intermixed with the markup. The reality is that most X HTML, whether created by hand or a tool, generally lies somewhere between strict conformance and no conformance to the specification. This section gives you a brief tour of some of the more important aspects of X HTML syntax that are necessary to understand to produce well-formed markup. HTML is not case sensitive, XHTML is. These markup examples are all equivalent under traditional HTML. Go boldly go boldly go boldly go boldly. In the past, developers were highly opinionated about how to case elements. Some designers pointed to the ease of typing lowercase tags as well as XHTML's requirement for lowercase elements as reasons to go all lowercase. HTML5 reverts back to case insensitive markup and thus we may see a return to uppercase tags by standards aware developers. 42 P A R T I C O R E M A R K U P Attribute values may be case sensitive. Consider and under traditional HTML, these are equivalent because the tag and the SRC attribute are not case sensitive. However, given XHTML, 
they should always be lower case however just because attribute names are not case sensitive under traditional html this doesn't mean every aspect of attributes is case insensitive regardless of the use of xhtml or html the actual attribute values in some tags may be case sensitive particularly where urls are concerned so and do not necessarily reference the same image when referenced from a unix based web server where file names are case sensitive test.gif and test.gif would be two different files whereas on a windows web server where file names are not case sensitive they would reference the same file this is a common problem and often hinders the ability to easily transport a website from one server to another x html is sensitive to a single white space character any white space between characters displays as a single space this includes all tabs line breaks and carriage returns consider this markup T E S T O F S P A C E S T E S T O F S P A C E S T E S T O F S P A C E S As shown here all the spaces tabs and returns are collapsed to a single element However it is possible to force the white space issue if more spaces are required it is possible to use the non breaking space entity or an nbsp some consider this the duct tape of the web useful in a bind when a little bit of spacing is needed or an element has to be kept from collapsing yet using markups such as and nbsp and nbsp and nbsp and nbsp and nbsp and nbsp look i am spaced out would add space to the output The question is exactly how far in print using spaces to format is dangerous given font size variability so text rarely lines up this is no different on the web further note that in some situations x html does treat white space characters differently in the case of the pre element which defines a preformatted block of text white space is preserved rather than ignored because the content is considered preformatted it is also possible to use the css property white space to change default white space handling because browsers will ignore most white space web page authors often format their documents for readability however the reality is that browsers really don't care one way or another no do end users because of this some sites have adopted a markup optimization idea often called crunching or minification to save bandwidth c h a p t e r 1 t r a d i t i o n a l h t m l a n d x h t m l 43 part i x h t m l follows a content model All forms of markup support a content model that specifies that certain elements are supposed to occur only within other elements. For example, markup like this. What a simple way to break the content model, which often is used for simple indentation, actually doesn't follow the content model for the strict X HTML specifications. The tag is only supposed to contain tags. The tag is not really appropriate in this context. Much of the time, web page authors are able to get away with this, but often they can't. For example, in some browsers, the tag found outside a tag is simply not displayed, yet in other browsers it is. Elements should have closed tags unless empty. Under traditional HTML some elements have optional close tags for example both of the paragraphs here are allowed although the second one is better this isn't closed this is however given the content model 
The close of the top paragraph can be inferred since its content model doesn't allow for another tag to occur within it. HTML5 continues to allow this, as discussed in Chapter 2. A few elements, like the horizontal rule, HR, and line break, BR, do not have close tags because they do not enclose any content. These are considered empty elements and can be used as is in traditional HTML. However, under XHTML you must always close tags, so you would have to write or, more commonly, use a self-closing tag format with a final character, like so. Unused elements may minimize sometimes tags may not appear to have any effect in a document. Consider. For example, the tag, which specifies a paragraph. As a block tag, it induces a return by default, but when used repeatedly, like so. Does this produce numerous blank lines? No, since the browser minimizes the MTP elements. Some HTML editors output nonsense markups such as and NBSP and NBSP and NBSP. To deal with this, if this looks like misused markup to you, you are right. Elements should nest. A simple rule states that tags should nest, not cross, thus, is in error as tags cross. 44 P A R T I C O R E M A A R K U P. Whereas, is not since tags nest. And thus is syntactically correct. All forms of markup, traditional HTML, XHTML, and HTML5, follow this rule, and while crossing tags may seem harmless, it does introduce some ambiguity in parsed trees. To be a well-formed markup, proper nesting is mandatory. Attributes should be quoted. Under traditional HTML as well as under HTML5, simple attribute values do not need to be quoted. If the attribute contains only alphanumeric content, dashes, and periods, then the quotes can safely be removed, so, would work fine in most browsers and would validate. However, the lack of quotes can lead to trouble especially when scripting is involved. Quotes should be used under transitional markup forms and are required under strict forms like XHTML, so, would be the correct form of the tag. Generally, it doesn't matter whether you use single or double quotes, unless other quotes are found within the quotes, which is common with JavaScript or even with CSS when it is found in an attribute value. Stylistically, double quotes tend to be favored, but either way you should be consistent. Entities should be used for special characters. Markup parsers are sensitive to special characters used for the markup itself, like Instead of writing these potentially parse dangerous characters in the document, they should be escaped out using a character entity. For example, instead of use or and hush 62, given that the ampersand character has special meaning in an entity, it would need to be escaped as well using an or and hush 38. Beyond escaping characters, it is necessary to insert special characters for special quote characters, legal symbols like copyright and trademark, currency, math, dingbats, and a variety of other difficult to type symbols. Such characters are also inserted with entities. For example, to insert the yen symbol, yen, you would use and yen, or and hush 165. With Unicode in play, there is a vast range of characters to choose from, but unfortunately there are difficulties in terms of compatibility, all of which is discussed in Appendix A. Browsers ignore unknown attributes and elements. For better or worse, 
Keep in mind that browsers will ignore unknown elements and attributes. So, this text will display on screen. And markups such as will also render fine. C H A P T E R 1 T R A D I T I O N A L H T M L A N D X H T M L 45. Part I. Browsers make best guesses at structuring malformed content and tend to ignore code that is obviously wrong. The permissive nature of browsers has resulted in a massive number of malformed HTML documents on the web. Oddly, from many people's perspective, this isn't an issue, because the browsers do make sense out of the tag soup they find. However, such a cavalier use of the language creates documents with shaky foundations at best. Once other technologies such as CSS and JavaScript are thrown into the mix, brazen flaunting of the rules can have repercussions and may result in broken pages. Furthermore, to automate the exchange of information on the web, collectively we need to enforce stricter structure of our documents. The focus on standards-based web development and future development of XHTML and HTML5 brings some hope for stability and structure of web documents. Major Themes of XHTML The major themes addressed in this section are deep issues that you will encounter over and over again throughout the book. Logical and Physical Markup no introduction to X HTML would be complete without a discussion of the logical versus physical markup battle. Physical markup refers to using a markup language such as X HTML to make pages look a particular way. Logical markup refers to using X HTML to specify the structure or meaning of content while using another technology such as CSS. To designate the look of the page, we begin a deeper exploration of CSS in Chapter 4. Physical markup is obvious. If you want to highlight something that is important to the reader, you might embolden it by enclosing it within a tag. This is important. This simple approach fits with the Visivig. What you see is what you get. World of programs such as Microsoft Word. Logical markup is a little less obvious. To indicate the importance of the phrase, it should be enclosed in the logical strong element. This is important. Interestingly, the default rendering of this would be to embolden the text. Given the difference, it seems the simpler, more obvious approach of using a tag is the way to go. However, actually the semantic meaning of strong provides a bit more flexibility and is preferred. Remember, the tag is used to say that something is important content, not to indicate how it looks. If a CSS rule were defined to say that important items should be big, red, and italic. Strong, font size, XX large, color, red, font style, Italic. Confusion would not necessarily ensue, because we shouldn't have a predisposed view of what strong means visually. However, if we presented a CSS rule to make tags act as such, it makes less sense because we assume that the meaning of the tag is simply to embolden some text. 46 P A R T I C O R E M A R K U P HTML unfortunately mixes logical and physical markup thinking. Even worse, common renderings are so familiar to developers that tags that are logical are assumed physical. What does a tag do? Most web developers would say it defines a big heading. However, that is assuming a physical view. It is simply saying that the enclosed content is a level 1 heading. How such a heading looks is completely arbitrary. While many of HTML's logical elements are relatively underutilized, others, 
such as headings and paragraphs, are used regularly though they are generally thought of as physical tags by most HTML users. Consider that people generally consider a large heading, a smaller heading, and predict that tag scores returns and you can see that, logical or not, the language is physical to most of its users. However, does that have to be the case? No, these are logical elements and the renderings, while common, are not required and CSS easily can change them. The benefits of logical elements might not be obvious to those comfortable with physical markup. To understand the benefits, it's important to realize that on the web, many browsers render things differently. In addition, predicting what the viewing environment will be is difficult. What browser does the user have? What is his or her monitor's screen resolution? Does the user even have a screen? Considering the extreme of the user having no screen at all, how would a speaking browser render a tag? What about a tag? Text tagged with might be read in a firm voice, but bold-faced text might not have an easily translated meaning outside the visual realm. Many realistic examples exist of the power of logical elements. Consider the international aspects of the web. In some countries, the date is written with the day first, followed by the month and year. In the United States, the date generally is written with the month first, and then the day and year. A or a tag, the latter of which is actually now part of HTML5, could tag the information and enable the browser to localize it for the appropriate viewing environment. In short, separation of the logical structure from the physical presentation allows multiple physical displays to be applied to the same content. This is a powerful idea which, unfortunately, even today is rarely taken advantage of. Whether you subscribe to the physical, specific, or logical, general, viewpoint, traditional HTML is neither purely physical nor purely logical, at least not yet. In other words, currently used HTML elements come in both flavors, physical and logical, though users nearly always think of them as physical. This is likely not going to get settled soon. The battle between logical and physical markup predates HTML by literally decades. HTML5 will certainly surprise any readers who are already logical markup fans, because it fully preserves traditional presentational tags like and, given their common use, though jumps through some interesting mental hoops to claim meaning is changed. Further, the new specification promotes media and visual focused markup like and and introduces tremendously powerful navigational and sectioning logical focused tags. If recent history is any guide, then HTML5 is likely going to pick up many fans. Standards versus practice just because a standard is defined doesn't necessarily mean that it will be embraced. Many web developers simply do not know or care about standards. As long as their page looks right in their favorite browser, they are happy and will continue to go on abusing HTML tags like and using various tricks and proprietary elements. CSS has really done. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-1 T-R-A-D-I-T-I-O-N-A-L-H-T-M-L-A-N-D-X-H-T-M-L-47 Part I Little to change this thinking, with the latest browser hex and filters as popular as the pixel tricks and table hex of the generation before. Developers tend to favor that which is easy and seems to work, so why bother to put more time in? particularly if browsers render the almost right markup with little complaint and notice. Obviously, this, good enough, approach simply isn't good enough. Without standards, 
the modern world wouldn't work well. For example, imagine a world of construction in which every nut and bolt might be a slightly different size. Standards provide needed consistency. The web needs standards, but standards have to acknowledge what people actually do. Declaring that web developers really need to validate, use logical markup, and separate the look from the structure of the document is great but it doesn't get them to do so. Standards are especially pointless if they are never widely implemented. Web technologies today are like English, widely understood but poorly spoken. However, at the same time they are the Latin of the web, providing a strong foundation for development and intersecting with numerous technologies. Web standards and development practices provide an interesting study of the difference between what theorists say and what people want and do. HTML5 seems a step in the right direction. The specification acknowledges that, for better or worse, traditional HTML practices are here for now, and thus attempts to make them solid while continuing to move technology forward and encourage correct usage. Myths and Misconceptions About HTML and XHTML The amount of hearsay, myths, and complete misunderstandings about HTML and XHTML is enormous. Much of this can be attributed to the fact that many people simply view the page source of sites or read quick tutorials to learn HTML. This section covers a few of the more common misconceptions about HTML and tries to expose the truth behind them. Misconception, Visivig works on the web, X, HTML isn't a specific, screen or printer precise formatting language like PostScript. Many people struggle with HTML on a daily basis, trying to create perfect layouts using X. HTML elements inappropriately or using images to make up for HTML's lack of screen and font handling features. Interestingly, even the concept of a visual visive editor propagates this myth of HTML as a page layout language. Other technologies, such as CSS, are far better than HTML for handling presentation issues and their use returns HTML to its structural roots. However, the battle to make the end user see exactly what you see on your screen is likely to be a futile one. Misconception HTML is a programming language Many people think that making HTML pages is similar to programming. However, HTML is unlike programming in that it does not specify logic. It specifies the structure of a document. The introduction of scripting languages such as JavaScript into web documents and the confusing terms dynamic HTML, DHTML, and Ajax, asynchronous JavaScript and XML, Tagged on may lead many to overestimate or underestimate the role of markup in the mix. However, markup is an important foundation for scripting and should be treated with the same syntactical precision that script is given. Misconception, XHTML is the only future approaching its 10th birthday. XHTML still has yet to make much inroads in the widespread building of web pages. Sorry to say, most documents are not authored in XHTML, and many 48 p of those that are, are done incorrectly. Poor developer education, the more stringent syntax requirements, and ultimately the lack of obvious tangible benefit may have kept many from adopting the XML variant of HTML. Misconception XHTML is dead although XHTML hasn't taken web development by storm, the potential rise of HTML5 does not spell the end of XHTML. In fact, you can write XML style markup in HTML, which most developers dub XHTML5. For precision, XHTML is the way to go, 
particularly when used in an environment that includes other forms of XML documents. XHTML's future is bright for those who build well-formed, valid markup documents. Myth Traditional HTML is going away HTML is the foundation of the web, with literally billions of pages in existence, not every document is going to be upgraded anytime soon. The legacy web will continue for years, and traditional non-standardized HTML will always be lurking around underneath even the most advanced web page years from now. Beating the standards drum might speed things up a bit, but the fact is, there's a long way to go before we are rid of messed up markup. HTML5 clearly acknowledges this point by documenting how browsers should act in light of malformed markup. Having taught HTML for years and having seen how both HTML editors and people build web pages, I think it is very unlikely that strictly conforming markup will be the norm anytime soon. Although, X, HTML has had rules for years, people have not really bothered to follow them. From their perspective, there has been little penalty for failing to follow the rules, and there is no obvious benefit to actually studying the language rigorously. Quite often, People learn markup simply through imitation by viewing the source of existing pages, which are not necessarily written correctly, and going from there. Like learning a spoken language, X, HTML's loosely enforced rules have allowed many document authors to get going quickly. Its biggest flaw is in some sense its biggest asset and has allowed millions of people to get involved with web page authoring. Rigor and structure is coming, but it will take time, tools, and education. Myth Someday standards will alleviate all our problems. Standards are important. Standards should help. Standards likely won't fix everything. From varying interpretations of standards, proprietary additions, and plain old bugs, there is likely never going to be a day where web development, even at the level of X, HTML markup, doesn't have its quirks and oddities. The forces of the market so far have proven this sentiment to be, at the very least, wishful thinking. Over a decade after first being considered during the writing of this book's first edition, the wait for some standards nirvana continues. Myth Hand coding of HTML will continue indefinitely although some people will continue to craft pages in a manner similar to mechanical typesetting, as web editors improve and produce standard markup perfectly, the need to hand tweak HTML documents will diminish. Hopefully, designers will realize that knowledge of the invisible pixel Trick or the CSS box model hack is not a bankable resume item and instead focus on development of their talents along with a firm standards-based understanding of markup, CSS, and JavaScript. C-H-A-P-T-E-R-1 T-R-A-D-I-T-I-O-N-A-L-H-T-M-L-A-N-D-X-H-T-M-L-49 Part I Myth X HTML is the most important technology needed to create web pages whereas, X, HTML is the basis for web pages. You need to know a lot more than markup to build useful web pages, unless the page is very simple. However, don't underestimate markup, because it can become a bit of a challenge itself. Based on the simple examples presented in this chapter, you might surmise that mastering web page creation is merely a matter of learning the multitude of markup tags, such as, and so on, that specify the structure of web documents to browsers. While this certainly is an important first step, it would be similar to believing you could master the art of writing by simply understanding the various commands available in Microsoft Word. 
There is a tremendous amount to know in the field of web design and development, including information architecture, visual design, client and server side programming, marketing and search engines, web servers and delivery, and much, much more. The future of markup, two parts. Having followed markup for well over a decade in writing editions of this book and beyond, it is still quite difficult to predict what will happen with it in the future, other than to say the move towards strict markup will likely be a bit slower than people think and probably not ideal. The sloppy syntax from the late 1990s is still with us and is likely to be so for some time. The desire to change this is strong, but so far the battle for strict markup is far from won. We explore here two competing, or potentially complementary, paths for the future of markup. XHTML, Web Page Markup XML Style a new version of HTML called XHTML became a W3C recommendation in January 2000. XHTML, as discussed earlier in the chapter, is a reformulation of HTML using XML that attempts to change the direction and use of HTML to the way it ought to be. So what does that mean? In short, rules now matter. As you know, you can feed a browser just about anything and it will render. XHTML would aim to end that. Now if you make a mistake, it should matter. Theoretically, a strictly XHTML conforming browser shouldn't render a page at all if it doesn't conform to the standard, though this is highly unlikely to happen because browsers resort to a backward compatibility quirks mode to display such documents. The question is, could you enforce the strict sense of XML using XHTML? The short answer is, maybe not ideally. To demonstrate, let's reformulate the Xhtmla Hello World.html example slightly by adding an XML directive and forcing the MIME type to be XML. We'll then try to change the file. Extension to .xml to ensure that the server gets the browser to really treat the file as XML data. Hello XHTML world. 50 p a r t i c o r e m a r k u p. Welcome to the world of XHTML. XHTML really isn't so hard either. Soon you will enhance using XHTML too. There are some differences between XHTML and HTML but with some precise markup you'll see such differences are easily addressed. Online Interestingly, most browsers, save Internet Explorer, will not have a problem with this. Internet Explorer will treat the apparent XML acting as HTML as normal HTML markup, but if we force the issue. It will parse it as XML and then render an XML tree rather than a default rendering. Correct render parse tree. To get the benefit of using XML, we need to explore if syntax checking is really enforced. Turns out that works if the browser believes markup to be XML, but not if the browser gets the slightest idea that we mean for content to be HTML. See for yourself when you try the examples that follow. You should note it properly fails when it assumes XML and not when it suspects HTML. CHAPTER1 TRADITIONAL HTM example presented is quite simple and meant to show the possibility of XHTML if it were fully realized. Note that as soon as you start adding markup with internal CSS and JavaScript, the amount of work to get rendering working in browsers increases substantially. In summary, if a browser really believes it is getting XML, it will enforce parsing rules and force well-formedness. Regardless of whether rules are enforced or not, 
without Internet Explorer rendering markup visually. It would appear that we have to deliver XHTML as standard HTML, as mentioned earlier in the chapter, which pretty much makes the move to an XML world pointless. Note as this edition of the book was wrapped up, the future of XHTML2 became murky because the W3C announced that it was letting the XHTML2 working group's charter expire. This, however, should not be taken to indicate that XML applied to HTML is dead. It does indeed live on under HTML5. 52 PARTI C-O-R-E-M-A-R-K-U-P HTML5 Back to the Future Starting in 2004, a group of well-known organizations and individuals got together to form a standards body called the Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group, or WAIT, www.wait.org whose goal was to produce a new version of HTML. The exact reasons and motivations for this effort seem to vary depending on who you talk to, slow uptake of XHTML, frustration with the lack of movement by the web standards body, need for innovation, or any one of many other reasons, but, whatever the case, the aim was to create a new, rich future for web applications that include HTML as a foundation element. Aspects of the emerging specifications such as the canvas element have already shown up in browsers like Safari and Firefox, so by 2008, the efforts of this group were rolled into the W3C and drafts began to emerge. Whether this makes HTML5 become official or likely to be fully adopted is obviously somewhat at the mercy of the browser vendors and the market but clearly another very likely path for the future of markup goes through HTML5. Already we see Google adopting it in various places, so its future looks bright. Note while HTML5 stabilized somewhat around October 2009, with a W3C final candidate recommendation goal of 2012, you are duly warned that the status of HTML5 may change. Because of the early nature of the specification, specific documentation of HTML5 focuses more on what works now than on what may make it into the specification later. HTML5 is meant to represent a new version of HTML along the HTML4 path. The emerging specification also suggests that it will be a replacement for XHTML, yet it ends up supporting most of the syntax that end users actually use, particularly self-identifying empty elements, for example. It also reverses some of the trends, such as case sensitivity, that have entered into markup circles, so it would seem that the HTML styles of the past will be fine in the future. In most ways, HTML5 doesn't present much of a difference, as you saw earlier in the chapter's introductory example, shown again here. Hello HTML world welcome to the future world of HTML5 HTML5 really isn't so hard. Soon you will end hearts, using HTML. You can put lots of text here if you want. We could go on and on with fake text for you to read, but let's get back to the book. Online http colon slash slash All that is different in this example is that the statement is much simpler. In fact, the specific idea of using SGML and performing validation does not apply to HTML5. However, the syntax checking benefits of validation lives on and is now being called conformance checking and for all intents and purposes is the same. Interestingly, because of the statement in its shortened form, browsers will correctly enter into a standards compliance mode when they encounter an HTML5 document.
In the next chapter, we'll see that HTML5 is quite a bit different than HTML4 despite what our Hello World example suggests. There are many new tags and there is a tremendous emphasis on interactivity and web application development. However, probably the most interesting aspect of HTML5 is the focus on defining what browsers, or more widely, user agents in general, are supposed to do when they encounter ill-formed markup. HTML5, by defining known outcomes, makes it much more likely that today's tag soup will be parsed predictably by tomorrow's browsers. Unfortunately, read another way, it provides yet more reasons for those who create such a mess of markup not to change their bad habits. Likely, the future of markup has more than one possible outcome. My opinion is that those who produce professional grade markup or who write tools to do so will continue to embrace standards, XML or not, while those who dabble with code and have fun will continue to work with little understanding of the rules they break and will have no worries about doing so. The forgiveness that HTML allows is both the key to its popularity and, ultimately, the curse of the unpredictability often associated with it. Summary HTML is the markup language for building web pages and traditionally has combined physical and logical structuring ideas. Elements, in the form of tags such as and, are embedded within text documents to indicate to browsers how to render pages. The rules for HTML are fairly simple and compliance can be checked with a process called validation. Unfortunately, these rules have not been enforced by browsers in the past. Because of this looseness, there has been a great deal of misunderstanding about the purpose of HTML, and a good portion of the documents on the web do not conform to any particular official specification of HTML. Stricter forms of HTML, and especially the introduction of XHTML, attempt to impose a more rigid syntax, encourage logical markup, and leave presentational duties to other technologies such as cascading style sheets. While very widespread, use of strict markup has yet to occur on the web. Web developers should aim to meet standards to future-proof their documents and more easily address all the various issues that will certainly arise in getting browsers to render them properly.